Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we'll answer the question, why is COVID-19 causing more harm in humans than other viruses that we've seen in the past? Well, we know that this virus is novel. That means it's never been on this earth before. However, MERS, or Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome in 2012, and SARS, Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome that we saw in 2002, were also novel. So why didn't we see the global pandemic and the deaths with them that we're seeing with COVID-19? Well, let me start with the SARS. SARS is probably the most similar to COVID-19. It's also a coronavirus. It came on the scene as a novel virus in 2002, and the pandemic ended in 2004. The death rate of SARS was about 10 to 15%. The symptoms were very severe, and the thought was with SARS, it wasn't transmitted until symptoms occurred. With MERS, MERS came on the scene in 2012. It has an extremely high death rate of 35%. It's mainly contracted via animal to human contact, and we think mainly through camels. Person to person transmission is not easy unless there's very close contact for an extended period of time. We're mainly seeing contraction with hospital workers or caregivers. Then we come to COVID-19. It's also a coronavirus. The death rate we think is 0.6% to 2%, but that's very, very limited because we don't have worldwide testing. We simply don't know who's positive. Well, why are we seeing these differences? It's most likely due to the fact that COVID-19 has a wide range of asymptomatic carriers. We think that some people are completely asymptomatic the entire course of the illness, and we know for sure that people are asymptomatic carriers at least a few days before they develop symptoms. We simply did not see the asymptomatic transmission with MERS and SARS that we're seeing with COVID-19. Let me also talk about other global outbreaks and compare them to COVID-19. We all know about influenza. It's been around for a very, very long time. However, with influenza, we have a vaccine and treatments such as Tamiflu. Influenza changes a little bit every year, but our bodies have seen some components of it. And so we've developed antibodies. It's not novel. We have some residual immunity. The death rate with the annual influenza is about 0.1%. However, during our lifetimes, we have all experienced the H1N1 flu in 2009. This influenza was novel. The reason why it caused so much illness that year was that there were a lot more components that changed. It had a lot of variability from the year before, and so we simply didn't have the same type of immunity that we had seen with other influenzas. An interesting fact about the H1N1 flu is that the infection rate was highest in persons that were younger than 24, and it was fairly uncommon in persons older than 65 because of the fact that the H1N1 flu was very similar to a flu that had circulated prior to 1957. Let me end with Ebola. Some people have wondered about the relationship between COVID-19 and what we were seeing with Ebola. They're quite different. Ebola was seen in 2014 and thought to be completely eradicated in 2016, although I do have some concerns there may still be flare-ups in the world. This is also a virus and the fatality rate with Ebola was 80 to 90%, very, very deadly. Uh, however, instead of respiratory droplets, like a lot of these other viruses, Ebola is spread through bodily fluids such as blood, sweat, and feces. During the last stages of the disease, Ebola caused very, very severe symptoms. So it's not like someone with Ebola could continue on with their daily lives and continue to spread the illness. There's also no treatment available, but we were able to do very significant contact tracing and we were able to isolate this illness fairly easily, thank goodness. At the end of the day, COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus that's easily transmissible from one person to the next. And I think the reason why we're seeing such worldwide spread is that it's easily spread from one person to the other. And the most interesting fact is that it's spread 
even before you have symptoms. At the end of the day, I can't stress enough the importance of hand washing and social distancing. Thanks again for joining me.